Hi friends, today we're going through a pretty much a battery of fragrances that claim to have iris at the heart or at least a prominent note. Uh, the reason that I'm going through my stash, I think I pulled almost everything I could think of, any future additions to my um, iris decant or sample or bottle collection will have to be judiciously monitored because it's been a bit of a thing for me. I kind of been buying way too many decants and samples of iris perfumes and I realized that probably with this video we need to go through what I've got. Some of them I know better, some of them I know less, but I need to kind of start systematizing and you know like start making conclusions because I feel like I'm very scatterbrained and I'm like way overdoing it when it comes to iris perfumes. There are many facets to iris as a accord, as a note. It can be green and rooty, almost reminding you of like a boiled carrot smell. It can be dry, powdery and almost dusty. It can go very complementary to the notes of violet and for me, it's a problem because I do not like violet, a prominent violet accord in a perfume, but often iris and violet, they kind of just like come together. To, also with addition of leather or suede notes, it's very common kind of combo, how these go. And irises can be creamy and almost lipsticky-like. So that's what lipsticks used to smell like. There was a lot of irisy notes in there, rosy, irisy. So, the newer forms of irises that is very contemporary would be molecular perfumes. And I think at this point, I have a little bit of everything. I just need to start making decisions. So we're gonna go with kind of, with no particular, <laughs> in no particular order, just I'm gonna go through the, all of the things that I've been acquiring and trying. And we will probably start ranking because at this point I need to figure out, do I, buy the bottle, do I keep the bottle, and things of that nature. The first one I thought was an IRC perfume. I couldn't be more wrong. So this is Ex Nihilo Sweet Morphine. It has iris in its heart, but largely is a very musky, sweet, fruity, white, white floral with mostly the heart of lilac. So if you think about this kind of fruity, musky perfume, Ix Nihilo has plenty of those, but with the heart of lilac, that will be Smith Morphine. Iris may be detectable somewhere, it's more like a creamy form of it, but not that much. To be honest, I, nah, not quite for me. I think I have better lilac perfumes, and this is, again, not irisy enough. So for now, not a problem of mine, which is gonna put it aside. Again, I just have to say something about those Lucky Scent samples. I think this is just plain perverted <laughs> to do it like this. It's less than a milliliter. The application is pretty much like seriously Lucky Scent, seriously. Just come on, just do it like other other normal brands do with a spray. Like seriously, it's, it's just eh, nasty. Anyway, now, a decant that I got from a friend, which is Commodity Oris. Commodity created quite a bit of panic in the perfume community when they are out of business. And almost within a year or less, they got back into business. What do we find with Oris by Commodity? It's one of those like more affordable niche fragrance houses. I find that they do rather comfortable very wearable perfumes. I wouldn't really call them true niche because in a way, they're almost too comfy. It's the Jo Malone level of comfy, in at least in my book. So, Oris Commodity is powdery, woody. This more clear, I mean, the name says it all. Oris is the, the iris, iris. Earthy, soft, spicy, aromatic. They even say it's fresh and white floral which I would agree with, there's some, this like white musk sourness that I detect at the very beginning, which is not my cup of tea. It's a very wearable perfume, 
But I find this reminds me of so many other white florals with iris almost being an afterthought. And given that this is named after the flower, I find myself a little kind of at least more to be desired. Also, it's not really iris at all. I think what they meant was maybe the root, not the flower. And maybe that's why I'm struggling. To me, this is more of like some kind of very rich floral lily of the valley centric scent. But again, with iris, I guess it's again probably talking about the root, which gives you this somewhat of a kind of boiled carrot kind of flavor. Eh. I mean, wearable, just like all commodity scents, they are very comfortable, confident, well composed, and elegant. But to me, commodity fragrances kind of lack complexity. So I would gladly wear those five mil that I got from a friend, but it's not gonna be, I don't see myself buying this unless I become crazy about Lily of the Valley scents. Because to me, this is mostly a sweeter, elegant version of Lily of the Valley. Often Lily of the Valley gets very soapy or it gets almost piercing in the way that it just doesn't let you go. It just follows you around. Um, and that's what kind of makes me feel a little bit apprehend apprehensive about Lily of the Valley at the heart of any perfume. This though, I would rather recommend to those who want to try Lily of the Valley scented centric perfumes, but you're not quite ready to go all the way toward Diorissimo. Again, not iris, it's not an iris type of perfume for me. The next one we're gonna try is uh, a brand that I heard a lot about because it's fairly affordable, depends what kind of line by Korolov you choose. And they have an, uh, a perfume dedicated to iris called Iris Door. So I presume this is a woody iris. I would say this is musky patchouli scent with, you know, this like molecular woody notes. Powdery, woody, musky, white floral, violet, yeah. Let me try it on the blotter. First and foremost, I just sense this kind of like white musks to me those are often lending between sour and bitter yellow floral floral i don't know why on earth would that would that be dedicated to iris let's double check musky okay the official description aromatic woody musky powdery fresh spicy iris amber earthy citrus lavender if it is woody, it's one of those molecule number two, three, four, um, you know what I mean. Those synthetic compounds that's, that give you this simultaneous kind of industrial, somewhat sour, bitter, green, woody, slash patchouli type of base. That's what it makes me think of. Where is Iris in here? I mean, probably in the heart. Maybe I'll give it some time. We'll might try to come back to it later. But right now, as an Iris, I don't even want to wear the sample. That's how little I really feel for it. It's okay. It, again, it reminds me of the, you know, the, the molecules. Like two, three, four. Like to me, the, between the two and four, it, it's all a blur. Not gonna lie. But since we're on the notion of molecular perfumery, I have two contemporary molecular perfumes that aim at the iris through th th unapologetically synthetic compounds. One is nomen nomenclature. I love their bottles that kind of like exploit the chemical lab idea. And the perfume that they made dedicated to iris is called Iri Iridel. Yeah, Iri Iridel. I was saving it for the better day and it pretty much evaporated. Story of my life. 
So let's try to save what, what's left. You know, I must say I kind of like it. I thought, since I'm not a big fan of molecular perfumery on all of these Ambroxan and the la 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 la, I thought that the contemporary industrial take on Iris I wouldn't like. But it's probably the most likable take on, like, on molecular perfumery that I've so far experienced. So Iridel definitely a candidate for me to get a decant or maybe if the bottle is affordable enough, full bottle. But that said, it has a competitor, which I have a full travel for. When I, again, this is already out, so it's very hard to, to really tell. But when I compared them at the time, like a month ago, they seemed so similar to me, they could be clones. This is Atelier Cologne Iris Rebel. And I kind of love this take on, it's like a, a black and white graphic design of an iris flower. It's dry, it's a little bit carroty, just a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit carroty. But otherwise, a very intelligent kind of iris that's getting its master's degree. <laughs> Somewhere, I don't know, in University of Columbia, New York. Columbia, sorry, Columbia University, New York. For some reason, it's, it's kind of this cerebral, snobby, but very contemporary take on boring. And I like it. I like it. I like it for work. I think I'm going to put it on my, uh, on my home desk and I'm going to wear it on those days when I feel like I want to be an architect of the future. So Iridel might have to wait until I get my, get through the travel off Atelier Cologne, Iris Rebel, and if you have either or both, please let me know how they compare. Definitely contemporary molecular irises, I'm as surprised as you are. I tend to like them. My category of irises, I dig it. I really dig it. All right, hopefully another lighter form of iris is Keiko Micheri. I really like their kind of take on minimalism that is still very ornamental. Their perfumes are often kind of like watercolor paintings. They can be very wearable, but yet there is always something like an echo, something elusive in them. That's what I like about Keiki Michiri perfumes. So let's see where we are in rooms. It's woody, iris, earthy, citrus, powdery, mossy, violet. Ah, oh, don't like violet. Amber sweet. Well, to me, iris here again comes as an afterthought. It's there somewhere. What I get most is this bitter, acidic yuzu note. I think it's yuzu, right? Yuzu note. This kind of like combination of vanilla sweet, ambery vanilla sweetness and the citrusy, bitter citrusy note of yuzu. Not about iris, not nearly enough. That said, I do like it. I would probably put it in my pile of yuzu uh, centric perfumes and try to kind of pick it kind of compare it against them to decide what kind of yuzu perfume I want to get because it's also one of the things that I want to explore more. Please give me your advice if you know of any really good candidates for yuzu-centric perfumes. But nah, not, it's, that doesn't really drive the message home when it comes to the Iris Accord. Now we're getting to things that I'm getting a little bit more serious when it comes to Iris. One kind of silly detour but I love it, so I'm gonna recommend it either way, is Dana Navy. I already got through 
most of this bottle and I think I have a backup, if I'm not mistaken. Very affordable. Pretty much that's how the dry powder is like, you know, this typical like just drying powder, the talc powder by Johnson & Johnson smells. A lot of drying sheets can smell like that. To me, it is flamboyantly powdery, punchy composition. In some ways, it almost reminds me kind of like by the character, the punchiness and flamboyant nature of this powderiness. powderiness. It reminds me of Anglomania by Vivian Westwood, even though it's a, it's a different, uh, different composition. I love it. And I do wear it as a personal perfume. I do. It's just fun. It's a little bit 80s because it's a little bit loud. But it has this very cool combination of both kind of lipsticky facets of iris and the powdery facets of iris. And it's probably, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's the brightest, most optimistic, most colorful of all the perfumes that we're going to be comparing today. Highly recommend it costs nothing. The only danger of buying Dana Navy is if it reminds you too much of the drying sheets or some kind of, you know, household product. Because it definitely has that, that flavor to it. To me, I don't have those associations. At least they're not strong. I actually love wearing it. I genuinely do. That said, now we're getting to kind of the, the bottle collection of irises that I have and this is gonna to be tough to rank. Let's jump from this. I only have 15 mil, and this is probably the paragon of suede iris perfumes. It's not, it doesn't have nearly as much um, violet as a lot of other combinations with iris tend to have. And it's just, it's perfect, honestly. I'm. I'm crying every night when I go to check if I can find like a, a used bottle somewhere on Mercari, you know, maybe for half price or something. And it's never, never, ever to be found anywhere on any sites. This is the one of the hardest ones to get. You still can get it from the official website, but check the price and, you know, shed a few tears. So it's actually dedicated to an opera, Madame Butterfly. It's Histoire de Parfums, French niche brand. I love their packaging. This is kind of reminds me of vaping, but they are larger bottles. They are made like books. They stack beautifully together, let me tell you, as an owner of almost 10 bottles by Histoire de Parfums. So 1904, Madame Butterfly by Puccini powdery, woody, irisy, and to me, it also has this delicious almondy vanilla cord that for some reason doesn't land too edible for me, together with the powderiness of it. With the sweetness, I feel like it's very warm suede. Ugh. Words cannot describe how much I love it. I used up probably a quarter. And every time I spray it, I shed a tear because I just can't imagine myself, my, my collection of powdery perfumes without it. The absolute perfection. Perfection in a bottle. If you guys have it for exchange or willing to sell a leftover in the bottle for a reasonable price so you know somewhere I can find it for more affordable price please let me know because I'm just so in love with 1904 man easily number one I'm gonna say number one I receive perfume in my collection and I only have at this point 10 mil it's it's devastating the next one is going to be Iris de Champs by Ubigan, a historic, very well-respected brand that unfortunately suffered from kind of muddled ownership over the years. This is why it's not much known about it anymore. It's really convoluted whether they even market or sell it and how, what kind of fragrances they still, still own recipes for and which of them were eventually sold to Dana. Um, so yeah, a lot of historic Ubigan perfumes that were 
truly create the creations of art were like the formulas were sold to Dana. They were simplified, reformulated, and now barely recognizable. That's sometimes how history goes if the perfume house struggles to keep itself afloat. Yet they still have a few perfumes that are available online, and Iris de Champs is one of the probably best sellers. Nah, no, I wouldn't say so. I, I would say it's somewhere in the middle. Probably the best sellers are definitely their Fleur d'Orange, uh, Orange de F and Fleurs, I think it's called, which is newer. I mean, the absolute cult favorite by them is Fougère Royale, which started the whole family of Fougère fragrances. I mean, they have quite a few cool ones. Kilke Fleurs and a lot of flankers there are also really, really well known. Yeah, I would say that the Aris de Champs is somewhere like kind of on the second shelf in terms of being known. But to me, this is one of the most beautiful lipsticky Iris perfumes. And yet it doesn't go too fatty and too oily as, you know, like the Lipstick Your Rose example would be Frederick Mal Lipstick Rose. <laughs> that one is oily as... This is not nearly as rich, oily and dense. Yet I would say this is a creamy, lipsticky, lotiony type of iris perfume. I really like it. A lot of people ask me to like give them a sample because it's nearly impossible to sample if you don't buy it blindly. I would say it's a very elegant but creamier, lotionier version of Iris if you like that kind of story. But I can say that it's my favorite. I mostly keep it in my collection for reference and because I like the packaging and I, you know I have like a soft spot for the house and well, how much trouble they went through over the years. But not quite, I guess like the lipsticky, lotiony irises are not quite my thing. But every time I wear it, I enjoy it. A few words about probably, you're probably questioning why am I not bringing this into focus, Iris by Prada. Their famous cologne that started the whole line of colognes by Prada and probably one of those, again, perfect iris compositions that you can benchmark a lot of other uh, perfumes against. I did have it. I had it twice in my lifetime and every single time I would get bored with it very quickly. For some reason there's something melancholic and depressing about Prada Iris for me. So yes, it is the the one probably to to start with at least to see what the the heart of iris perfumery is all about yet i never really found a soft spot in my heart for it so it's not going to be represented here but it's worth noting my number one i already said 1904 by history water parfums i will continue my search for the full size bottle because i i have i have to i i have to figure something out maybe, maybe history water parfums will take mercy on me and just will gift me a bottle because I've been talking about it to death. I think I deserve, <laughs> I deserve a bit of a recognition there, but uh, when does that happen? Um, a surprise favorite, and this is gonna be number two. Yes, I'm certain. Replica by Mason Margiela House, um, by the designer of Martin Margiela. Margiela. I'm not sure how to exactly uh, pronounce his name in his native tongue. Lipstick on. Dis allegedly discontinued for no good reason. Because I think after By the Fireplace, this was the second bestseller. I don't get I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it wasn't. But it was definitely one of the cult favorites in Eastern Europe by this particular house. This is the kind of iris that those of you who love sweets, who love Jean-Paul Gaultier, La Belle's and, and, and Flower Bomb and uh, Lancome, La Via Belle and, and maybe Elle Saab, like the, their designer line of perfumes. If you like these sweety, souffle-like perfumes that exploit the gourmand, syrupy facets of any note, 
this is pretty much like an iris dessert. And I usually don't like syrupy perfumes, not my cup of tea, but this, I fought myself. I didn't want to like it. I got one sample, then another sample, then another sample. Then somebody gave me a decant. I went through them with lightning speed until I couldn't take it anymore. And luckily for me, a subscriber <laughs> took pity on me and said like, you know what? You're such a snob, Maria. You're not gonna, you're never gonna buy it for yourself. And you're gonna keep buying all of those little decants and convincing yourself this is the last one. I'm just gonna give you a bottle. So I got it as a gift. And I'm finally, I'm, I give up. I love it. I love it. To me, this is not as creamy or lotion-y as Iris de Champs. I would say this to me is more, it's much more creamy, but much less sweet. This to me is very flamboyantly syrupy with delightful bright powderness on top. I adore this guy. Oh my God, lipstick on. If you can still find it and you want that kind of take on gourmand, the iris take on gourmand sweetness, or vice versa, you know, iris, if you like iris type of like powdery perfumes, but you want to explore gourmandise direction, try this. It's absolutely worth every dollar. Number two. What's gonna be the number three out of everything that I told you about? I think it's gonna be Dana. It's simple, kind of predictable, but it's fun. It honestly is fun. The number four, I'm gonna surprise myself. It's gonna be between, between these two. And oddly enough, I would say, maybe not Iris Rebel as specific fragrance, but contemporary molecular type of Iris perfumes. I kinda dig them. Not gonna lie, again, surprised. As, I, as am I surprised with gourmand iris perfumes? As I'm, I'm, I'm that surprised that I like these like Ikea of irises, molecular irises, love them both. I know that Lancome has Iris Dage. I think also one that really hard to get, get secondhand because people tend to buy it and just use it till the very last drop. So potentially, I don't know, I, I never tried it, but potentially you don't need both. I hear very similar things about Lipstick On and Iris Regé Balancom, their boutique line of perfumes. But man, surprise, surprise. Number two, Donna Navy, number three. Yes, I think it's going to be Molecular Irises with an example of Iris Rebel by Atelier Cologne or Iridel by Nomenclature, number four. And number five, it's gonna be Creamy Iris. I still dig it, I like it. I just don't like it as much. This is my ranking of Iris perfumes. If you have any good other candidates that I should explore or you're willing to like drop a little decant in my PO box, please let me know. I am trying to be decisive, but I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job yet. <laughs> I feel like there's more, there's more that's still left unexplored in the world of iris perfumes. Please let me know your thoughts about it. Tell me top three. If you have irises in your collection, what are your absolute like, mwah, compliments to the chef top three? We'll be waiting for your comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.